Hello and welcome to Call TV News at 4. I am Olaju Bokil Latunji. Because the state has of assembly witnessed the March chairman on Tuesday's plenary session meant to screen the assembly service commission was suspended. The suspension was allegedly hinged on rejection of the offer by one of the appointees, Delio Lugbemi, faction of speaker of the fourth assembly. The, the House, however, denies this, saying the suspension was due to logistics issue that will be corrected. Rashid Rashid As has State Governor Ayodele Fayoshi names members of the House of Assembly Service Commission, with Tunji Odeyemi, former Speaker and Acting Governor in the state, tipped as Chairman. Dele Olubemi, former factional leader of the Assembly, reportedly rejected the appointment as a member of the Commission, which led to the suspension of the initial screening. A position the House leadership denies as reason for the stand down. Members have to be five, five members, and uh, we're having only four, four members now. So the the fifth person is going to be included, so that the so that the the confirmation will be done at the same time. The speaker, Kola Oluwawali, denied that the screening was stopped because of rejection of an appointment. However, stressing that anyone has the right to reject an offer of service. When somebody is saying no, then there's, there will be a replacement, of course. There are so many people who are yearning for this position. So many very qualified people that are out there, uh, you know, uh, uh, seeking for, I mean, looking for an opportunity to grab it. Sonji Odeyemi. The chairman designate of the commission expresses hope that the members will be screened soon while gloom grips the face of some expectant relative. Hopefully by next week we will come back here again to present ourselves before the uh, honorable members of this august house. While the screening exercise is rescheduled, the postponement is raising more questions than answers. Rashid Rashid, Kwa TV News, Adoekiti. The perennial crisis in Plateau states that defied several interventions for over a decade has recently decided after the 2015 general elections. The Burem and the Fulani recently claimed that several members of their tribes have been targeted and killed by their neighbors. We bring you details of that report in a subsequent bulletins. Outgoing Controller General of Customs, Diko Abdullahi, says is leaving a service that is capable of sustaining itself amidst limited resources. He's also pointing at the Customs Hospital in Karu, Abuja, as one of the legacies is living behind after six years in charge. The hospital was commissioned by Kaduna State Governor Nasir El Rafai. I bring you details of that also in a subsequent bulletins. Niger Vice President Yemi Oshibaju says all actions so far taken by the All Progressives Congress government are geared towards ensuring that Nigeria takes its proper place in the Committee of Nations. He said the party was determined to ensure that the country emerged a major player in international affairs. Oshibaju, speaking on just on Monday, explained that to achieve this, the administration of President Buhari was planning to implement desirable changes that would not only bring greater transparency and accountability in the process of governance, but also promote inclusiveness in the pursuit of programs that would benefit Nigerians. Addressing participants at the National Institute for Policy and Strategic Studies, Kurunia Jazz, at the opening ceremony of a workshop, Oshibaja said the government was focused on revamping the country's economy. The vice president was represented by the head of service of the federation, Danladi Kifasi, stressed that the focus of the current administration is on rebuilding the country by galvanizing collective energy towards the common purpose. A group of activists under the banner of Coalition of Concerned Nigerian Citizens on Monday stitched a solidarity march to the presidential villa to show support for President Mohamed Buhari's war against corruption. They say Buhari stands on the probe of corrupt former government officials and recovery of looted funds is a step in the right direction. The group was received at the first entry point to the villa by the President Buhari's media advisors, Femi Adesino, Pasiaya reports. One of such is this coalition of concerned Nigerians comprising different groups, including the Bring Back Our Girls group. Though they are stopped at the gate, the president's media handlers are on hand to give the group audience. First, 
they present a petition to President Buhari, after which they expressed a vote of confidence on his anti-corruption crusade. We have delivered a paper, a presentation, which includes three major issues. And these are one, that the president should continue with the war against corruption and prop the past. Secondly, that Mr. President should make good his promise of declaring his assets publicly. And thirdly, that those who are advocating for amnesty for corruption should please abandon that unpopular position because the mandate we gave the president includes prop. Corruption affects more of youth. The issue of unemployment, the issue of crime, the issue of violence, that once the president can fix the issue of corruption, Nigeria will be on the path of accelerated development. In his address, the special advisor on media, Femi Adeshina, reaffirms his principal's commitment to recovering all looted funds, as well as the trial of culprits. He said the unfolding events are steps the president is taking to fulfill his campaign promises to Nigerians. He's a man of his word. Yes. He's a man of his word. Yes. He will stay the course and corruption will be forced to a standstill. Yes. And it's a word that is winnable with the support of the generality of Nigeria. Yes. Then I have this document you have given to me to pass on to him. The points you have raised. He would look at them because he's a responsive and responsible president. He will note the things you have asked for, and I'm sure he will respond adequately. Thank you. With many revelations made on the issue of funds recovery and government's bid to sanitize the system, many Nigerians are hopeful that the days ahead will witness a more open approach in the anti-corruption fight. Basia Ye, Core TV News, Abuja. President Muhammadu Buhari is prepared to facilitate the employment of an extra 100,000 police officers. He also wants to put in place a properly trained and well-equipped federal anti-terrorism multi-agency task force to address the challenge of Boko Haram and any form of insurgency. The president made this known at a one-day national security summit organized by the Nigerian police force in Abuja. President Buhari disclosed that he is considering the expansion of closed circuit television system to all major cities and towns in the country. He further expressed readiness to encourage states to look at the state level community interaction with police under a module that will integrate members of the community to police and functions at the grassroots levels. President Muhammad Buhari has said that the resettlement and comforts of internally displaced persons will remain a top priority of the federal government. Speaking after a briefing by the Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Women Affairs and Social Development, Zekel Uyibola Uyemumi, President Buhari said that the well-being of about 1.5 million people displaced by the insurgency in the Northeast must always be uppermost in the minds of those in government. The president therefore directed the ministry to always be mindful of the pathetic circumstances of the IDPs and factor them into proposals for next year's budget. Oyemami briefed President Buhari on the activities of his ministry as well as the ministry's successes and the challenges. He asked for improved funding for the Ministry of Women Affairs and Social Development in the 2016 budget. Niger's Vice President Yemi Oshiba just says all actions so far taken by the All Progressives Congress government are get towards ensuring that Niger takes its proper place in the Committee of Nations. He said the party was determined to ensure that the country emerged a major player in international affairs. Oshiba just speaking and just on Monday maintained that to achieve this, the administration of President Muhammad Buhari was planning to implement desirable changes that would only bring greater transparency and accountability in the process of governance, but also promote inclusiveness in the pursuit of programs that would benefit Nigerians. Addressing participants at the National Institute for Policy and Strategic Studies, Kuru Nejas, at the opening ceremony of a workshop, Oshibaja said the government was focused on revamping the country's economy. 
The vice president, who was represented by the head of service of the Federation, Danla de Kifasi, stressed that the focus of the current administration is on rebuilding the country by galvanizing collective energy through a common purpose. The Controller General of the Niger Customs Service, Ziko Abdullah, has voluntarily retired from office. He attended his resignation a few days, few weeks ago, pardon me, and would be proceeding on retirement from Tuesday, August 18. Reza Buhari has since the previous request in a letter he personally signed. The going Customs Chief told State House correspondents that he was taking a bow out of office after spending six years at the hands. Tomorrow, rather, I'm um, six years at the Controller General of Customs. And uh, after our wide consultations, uh, I decided to personally meet him and ex express my gratitude and appreciation for serving for six years. And uh, the only way the Nigerian Council Service can move forward, I feel personally, is by making a sacrifice. And the sacrifice is to give chance to others so that they can come up and continue with the legacy and the reform and the structure that I put in place. We have no fear. Uh, the time I'm going, it is a time when I feel that those young ones that uh, develop the uh, software can come off and manage the software. This is still called to the news at four. We'll take a break now, but back on more stories. Please stay with us. Is it what, 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 what crazy? Or talk crazy. Or what type of crazy is that? Except crazy. News making the headline. Black Maria is to, is to carry criminals, taking looters, that are in government today. Sometimes it gets confrontational. Stop you in the face. Kill me, don't put words into my mouth. Whatever it is, that will bring our ministry to the secret. I said, to help On me. Cold Digest. I want to know why I should be believing them. Every weekday, we we'll bring all of these together and take them to the court of public opinion. Everybody has a right in Nigeria. Where you are the judge. This is what the people are saying. You don't run a big economy with generator. They need to do more in terms of energy and power many things to do for this Nigeria about lights, water and new TT. For Nigerians that are not gullible, we know that good laws are done nothing good for this country. We already won the election eh? convincingly. They talk to our husband that you should keep promise oh, about what you said oh, and because people are watching you, you know, another election is coming. Because some people were strong for the land. We be strong man. You don't die. This nation is moving forward. The best is going to take place. The people giving voice to the voiceless. Thank you for joining us again. For more on the news and other programs, please visit our Facebook page at www.facebook.com forward slash call TV news. You can follow us on Twitter at call TV news and G. Also visit our YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash call TV liver space the news. Lagos State's Governor Akiyomi Ambadi has urged intending pilgrims from the state to this year's Hajj exercise to be good ambassadors of the state just as he showed them of adequate welfare package. While declaring open a seminar for intending pilgrims at an event in Lagos, Ambadi urged them to take advantage of the various lectures and orientation programs put together for the spiritual development of all intended pilgrims adding that they should be mindful of the image of the state and country during their interactions with fellow pilgrims and others in the Holy Land. The governor said it was gratifying that of the 66,000 pilgrims from Nigeria to this year's Hajj, 3,047 residents of Lagos making the state the highest in the southwest region. He also said that state is in dire need of men and women who have the fear of God and demonstrate religious tolerance and ready to sacrifice all they have for the growth and development of the state and the nation in general. Guest lecturer at the seminar, Tajid and Yusuf, addressed the gathering on the need to comport themselves and ensure that they pray for Lagos states and the country while on the exercise and ensure they pray for the state as a whole. 
A Catholic priest has been murdered in Oweri, Imo State capital, southeast Nigeria. The priest whose lifeless body was found along a lonely bush path is yet to be fully identified. However, an identification card found on him shows the staff of Imo State Polytechnic. The police public relations officer, Andrew Iwerim, over the phone confirmed the incident to Call TV News, adding that the police has recovered the sports utility vehicle belonging to the deceased, but no arrest has been made in connection to his death. While speaking with Call TV News, the police said they are suspecting a case of assassination owing to the condition of death of the priest who was found on the bush path leading to Port Harcourt. According to Werim, the endless fracker emanating from Imo State Polytechnic cannot be distanced from the case while promising the commitments of the force to investigate and bring the perpetrators to book. And while 23-year-old Gochuku Ekwe on Sunday committed suicide, the incident happened at his Festac 311 Road B close residence and a deceased was reported to have attempted suicide twice. An eyewitness account revealed that the late Ekwe had refused to accompany his aunt and siblings to church on Sunday, opting to play football instead. A friend later discovered his lifeless body hanging. While the real case of his action is under investigation, policemen from First Act Division have taken away the body. Some residents who spoke of Court of the News described the Kwe's action to possible discrimination and frustration. Ogochi Kwe was an albino. Over 200,000 Nigerian children, Nigerian children, pardon me, have been treated for acute malnourishment with the support of United Nations Children Fund, UNICEF, in the past six years. According to the Ministry of Health, about 1.7 million children have been reached through its high impact and cost effective community based approach in managing acute malnutrition. Government officials say they are committed to sustaining the intervention. We'll bring you details of that report in our subsequent bulletins. Another word of business, Senate leader Andrew Dume has explained why his colleagues in the upper chamber were pushing for fresh bailout for the domestic airlines operators in the country, despite the fact that the previous ones granted to them by the last administration was allegedly mismanaged. There have been public outcries against the move since stakeholders in the sector started conversing fresh bailouts recently because of the alleged mismanagement of funds made available to the operators between 2009 and 2012. On Dume, in an interview with newsmen in Abuja, explained that the Senate is worried that there is an impending crisis in the aviation sector at the moment, especially when the operators were already demanding an urgent federal government's assistance. Residents in four states in the South South will experience blackouts from today as workers at the Port Harcourt Electricity Distribution Company commence an indefinite strike over alleged unfair labor practices. The National Union of Electricity Employees on Monday directed workers of the company to shut power supply to those states with effect from Tuesday. The directive by the leadership of the union was said to be due to the alleged sacking and reduction in salaries of the union activists by the PHEDC. Given the directive, the General Secretary, no Joseph Ajayru, says the workers should halt all electricity transmission and distribution operations of the PHEDC. He also asked the workers to pick at the company's offices across the four states until further notice. He added that the union had been silent over the alleged impunity and abuse of workers' rights for over two years. Ajero said the workers could no longer tolerate the alleged unfair labor practices, adding that it was time for the labor union to stop the abuse of workers' rights and make the PAGDC management to face the reality that will not render any services to the company until we direct otherwise. End of quote. It was learned that a 14 day ultimatum, which had earlier been issued by the union and signed by the senior assistant general secretary of the union. And in the world of sport, Wall Street Open lower on Tuesday, way down by 6% slum and Chinese shares and Walwards. Wicked than expected quarterly results, 
Walmart well, shares fell as much as 3.2 percent to nearly two one and a half year low of 69.58 dollars, and where the biggest drug and the Dow Jones Industrial Average does not fell 1.1 percent to 107.86 dollars after a world's faggot downgrade and weighed on the S&P 500 and the Dow. Apple for whom China is a key market fell 0.5% to 116.60 and was the biggest drag on the Nasdaq and the S&P 500. Chinese stocks plunged again as the yuan weakened against the dollar, igniting fears that Beijing may be intense in a deeper devaluation of the currency despite the central bank's reassurances. Manchester United rekindled their Champions League love affair on Tuesday when they work a modest Belgian side club break it to Old Trafford for the home leg of the playoff round tie. The first thing to team both to compete in the European Cup and win it, United have long had a special association with the competition, reinforced by the knowledge it was in pursuit of continental glory. The eight of the players and three club officials perished in the Munich air disaster of 1958. Last season was United's first of our Champions League football in 19 years, but he had been led to the brink of the group faced by Lois Wenger who won the tournament with a brilliant young team in 1995 and led Bayern Munich to the final in 2010. Wenger has now sampled the competition since 2011, but with United having opened the season by beating first Tottenham Osper and then Aston Villa by a goal to New, has confidence of making a win and return. The Dio will hope their clubs play a full good first leg on Tuesday in the playoffs for the UCL across Europe. Nigerians Ahmed Musa and Agai Onaza would hope to see the club sides emerge victorious when they play the first leg playoffs in the UEFA Champions League on Tuesday. Moses CSK and Moscow head to Portugal where they will play against Sporting Club while Onaza's last year will host German side Bayern Lefkan in Rome. Moses scored the breeze in the third qualifier round 5-4. Aggregate victory over Sparta Braha and would hope to continue in his bleacher start to the season. Last year, welcome Levich Cousin to the Stadium Olympico for the first game of the 2015 2016 UCL season. Onaza scored the most important goal of last year's season at the end of the last campaign to hand them a sport in this year's UEFA Champions League. The young Nigerian would hope to see them pass the Germans and through to the group stages for the first time in his career. On Wednesday, Effie Hambras and Celtic take on Swedish side Malmo in the fourth leg play of while Noza Igabo's Matalim, Switzerland to take on Basel. Igabo had already scored two goals in the Champions League Premier Rounds. Atletico Bilbao won a first trophy in 31 years as a 1 1 draw with Barcelona at the NOU camp secured the Spanish Super Cup for the 5 1 aggregate victory. Bilbao won the first leg 4 0, but Barcelona threatened a comeback with Lionel Messi's close range finish. Back at the defender, Gerard Pico was sent off after the break, and Aris Aduri struck late on to seal it for Bilbao. The visitors had kicked Salah sent off later, but the celebrations for Bilbao had already began. It was ultimately a disappointing display for Barcelona, who, despite plenty of possessions, failed to threaten often enough. And Maurice Rogers Cup final win over Novak Djokovic is a huge psychological boost for the U.S. Open, says former British number two Jamie Baker. Rossi scored 28 ended on 8 March losing run against the world number one to prevail 6-4, 4-6-6-3 six, in Montreal. Murray bet Djokovic to win the U.S. Open in 2012 and did so again to try for Wimbledon in 2013. However, Sunday's success in Canada was his first against the Serb since he ended Britain's 77-year wait for men's single glory at SW19. 
And also at night, Jerry Bombers explored the closer shrine in the center of Thailand's capital, Bangkok, killing at least 19 people and injuring more than 120. The Erewhon Shrine, which was crowded at the time of the blast, is a major tourist attraction. Foreigners, including Chinese, are among the casualties. No one has yet said they carried out the attack, and Defense Minister Prowett Wongawan said the bombers had targeted foreigners to damage tourism and the economy. As Prime Minister Prius Chanchur said the government would set up a war room to coordinate its response. National Police Chief Stomward Popon Wan said that 10 Thais have been confirmed dead, along with one Chinese and one Filipino, as the shrine is dedicated to the Hindu god Brahma, but is also visited by thousands of Buddhists each day. Egyptian President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi has approved stringent new counter-terrorism laws to fight a growing jihadist insurgency. The laws establish special court and offer additional protection from legal consequences for military and police officers who have used force. They also impose a death penalty for anyone found guilty of setting up or leading a terrorist group. Jihadist groups that uh, stepped up their attacks after the military overthrew President Mohamed Morsi two years ago and launched a deadly crackdown on the Muslim Brotherhood. But that is to wrap on course of news at four. Many thanks for watching. I'm a large Good afternoon.